Hey, Digital Campus. I'm so happy that you're joining today from wherever you are. My name is Gina, and I'm the digital pastor here at Church Unleashed, and we have an incredible message right here, right now, that you're going to check out. Pastor Todd, this past weekend, talked about 10 power principles to help us live a full, hope-filled life. Let's check it out. So today, I want to hit you with some rapid-fire power principles. Are you ready for this? Okay, this is like Chick-fil-A. I'm going to give you the secret sauce. You want to live, come on, give me a Chick-fil-A. If you want to live successful in this life and you want to be seen as out of this world, you got to find these 10 power principles. So really quick, here it is. Power principle number one. I think you got a handout when you came in or take a quick picture with, uh, on your camera. Uh, it says this on your phone. It says, power principle number one, the enemies know is always, is never stronger than God's yes. The enemy's no is never stronger than God's yes. When God says yes, it's done. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to fight for it. You don't have to work it. Come on, somebody. You got to stop believing the lies of the enemy. The enemy will always tell you it's over. There's never going to be a turnaround. You're never going to become what God designed you to be. But God's yes will always overpower the enemy's no. And so often, hell shouts a no, but it cannot stop God's plan and purpose for your life. Listen to this passage. Psalm 133, verse 3 says this. It's like the dew on Mount Hermon, flowing down the slopes of Zion. Yes, that's where God commands his blessing, ordains eternal life. I want you to track with me on this. Mount Hermon in the Bible is seen as the sacred mountain. Church is a sacred space. The sacred mountain is where God commanded his blessing. The sacred space in God's house is where God releases his blessing on his church. So when we gather, we're not just gathering to sing some songs and hear a motivational speech. We are coming to receive the blessings of God. And God releases the blessings in your life. God releases financial blessing in your life. God releases healing in your life. Restored relationship. And God commands that blessing. In other words, there's not a no on this planet that could stop God's yes from your life. There's nothing on this planet. And so... God commands a blessing from that sacred space. Power principle number one is always that the enemies know is never stronger than God's yes. Power principle number two, what you think in your mind always manifests in your life. Your mind is a powerful tool. I mean, when you think about the mind, your mind is your greatest asset, but it's also your greatest liability. How many of you have ever had negative self-talk? Let me just, just raise your hand if you ever talk to yourself negatively. It's okay to talk to yourself. Okay, just keep it up for a second. Let's just discourage each other. Just look around the room. How many of you ever got up and said, man, I'm such an idiot? All the men went like... <laughs> I mean, you ever walk and say, I can't believe... Man, I'm such a loser. I, I'll never get that job. This will never happen you got to change your, your, your tone in your head. So often, and I wrestle with this, because I think every person wrestles with negative self-talk. It's our inner dialogue. Too many people are focused on the enemy instead of the inner me. The inner me on the outs, inside that's actually filling our mind with all this negativity and this conversation about ourselves. When I wake up in the morning, I say this every morning. I'm the best looking guy in this bathroom. I'm the only guy in the bathroom, but I say it every single day. What am I doing? I'm just encouraging myself. I wake up every day and say, God, I'm blessed. God, thank you for all the gifts that you've given to me. God, thank you for the gift of life, the gift of joy, the gift of peace. God, thank you that my wife loves me. God, thank you that I got healthy kids. Every day I'm kind of filling myself with all the goodness and favor and blessing. I'm reminding myself. For years and years I used to say this expression. I'm just a boy from Buffalo, New York. I had a pastor friend of mine correct me this week. He said, stop saying that because you're minimizing yourself. What you need to start declaring is you're just a blessed boy from Buffalo, New York. Even the smallest tweaks can take you to higher peaks. Sometimes it's that small little language adjustment that we need to do, but our negative self-talk can be so dysfunctional in our lives. The Bible says this, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. 
So when you're going to a business deal, don't go in saying, well, they're never going to accept this deal. You walk in confident, saying, God, thank you that they're going to love me. Thank you that they're going to like this deal. Thank you that every party's going to sign on the dotted line. When you go to get that car that you might want to get, maybe you're dreaming of a Mercedes, and you walk in and say, I only can pay $600 a month, which is ridiculous in my opinion, but that's what you got. And you go and say, I can only pay six, and they're telling you $679. You in your mind got to say, no, they're going to give it to me for six, because if they ain't giving it to me for six, I'm walking out because someone will give it to me for six. Just throwing it at you. I think like it's kind of like hitting like here and this section over here is looking at me funny your mind's a powerful tool you got to guard your mind and protect your thoughts because I learned this principle years ago from my mother if you put garbage in garbage will come out and I think if we keep putting garbage in it's gonna eventually come out your mind's a terrible thing to waste you remember that commercial your mind is a terrible thing to waste now just drugs it's a terrible thing to waste with your thoughts don't waste it on repeating the negative cycle over and over and over again and here's why this is important if you don't control your thoughts your thoughts will control you if you don't control your thoughts your thoughts will control you that's why the bible says take captive every thought make it submission submissive to god's principle god's word some of you need to take captive some of those thoughts of I'll never recover from that divorce take it captive no you're going to get through it you're going to come out on the other side somebody said I'm never going to get through the loss of this family member or this friend no take that thought captive and say God I don't understand why things happen but I do know that you're working things out for your glory and my good I may not understand it on this side of eternity but one day I'm going to understand it you've got to take control of your thoughts because if you don't control your thoughts your thoughts will control you power principle number three are you still with me oh you guys are better than nine o'clock thank you uh here's an important one accidents are often appointments you ignored accidents are often appointments you ignored sometimes god's got to get our attention but we're just plain and simply too stubborn i'm gonna let this one sit it's kind of like a good stew you got to let it simmer for a little bit Accidents are often appointments you ignored. Sometimes God's got to just get our attention for a minute and remind us that life is short. Nothing's ever guaranteed. You ever had a time where you had an accident and then God used it? Like something that, man, this, should, this shouldn't have happened. But then all of a sudden on the other side, a year later, you're like, man, that was all God. Let me tell you a story. I don't know, several years ago, our church was given a building, given a building in the village of Babylon. It was a small church. It was a dump, let's be honest. It was a dump. So he ends up, we didn't get a half million, but I got $485,000 for this dump that was given to us. For two years, I was complaining to God. The building you're sitting in today, the down payment and renovations were paid for because of that building that was given to us. Accidents are often appointments that we ignored. I could have literally kept complaining, complaining, complaining. But you know what happens when you complain? You, you remain. You don't move forward. And God said, hey, listen, Todd, you only see this much. But I see a much bigger picture. Aren't you thankful that we took that free building that was kind of a pain in the rear end? But look what God has done. Look what God's done. The Bible says this. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. Any godly people in the house? Then the Lord directs your steps. He says he delights in every detail of your life. Not just the good details, but also the not so good details. God delights in every detail. God uses everything we ever go through or ever experience to get us where he designed us to be. The reality is that building that was given to us actually propelled us to be able to buy this building. It didn't slow us down. It may have slowed it down in my timing, but God's timing is always perfect. The Bible says his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. God sees the bigger picture. Those accidental moments, those things that sometimes you think you regret, is actually God's way of designing our life. Your steps have been directed by God. Power principle number four, never mistake volume for authority. 
There's a lot of loud people out there today. Is that not true? There's a lot of loud people. I'm a loud person. But loud does not mean you're an authority. There's a lot of people that scream, yeah! It was just to wake up the people in the back. There's a lot of people that literally are loud, but they have no real authority. Because the truth is, there's a lot of noise in our world today. And truth is being drowned out by the noise. Honor is being drowned out by the noise. Respect for those in authority is being drowned out by the noise. And social media has given every person a megaphone. But hear me today, not every mouth deserves a megaphone. True authority comes with the anointing. True volume comes with the anointing. The prophet Isaiah said this, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. That's about anointing. For he has anointed me to bring the good news. Good news. Some of us have become rebroadcast of every negative story out there. And we wonder why suicide rates are up. We wonder why um, prescription drugs are up, antidepressants are up. We wonder why, because all we're doing is regurgitating negative, 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 negative. And you know when you start believing after a year of negativity? Negative, 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 negative. And then kids are like, well, what good is it to study? What good is it to go to school? What good, let me tell you what good it is. God has a plan and purpose for every single person's life. God has anointed us to give good news to people. And the good news is, as I've been screaming for 13 months, is we're going to come out of this bigger, better, bolder, and stronger if we stay in faith, if we continue to trust God. He says, I've anointed you to bring good news. He sent me to comfort the brokenhearted. He didn't say, I've sent you to make more broken hearts. He said, I sent you to comfort those whose hearts have been broken. So many people have lost so much in the last 13 months. They do not need to be screamed at. Get over it. What they need is a loving person to come alongside and say, let's take one step. Let's take one step. Maybe you lost a family member or a friend in the struggle of COVID. You know what you need? You don't need someone saying, it's not a real thing. COVID is a real virus. What you need is someone to come alongside you and say, you're going to get through this. God's got your back. He's going to be your strength. He is your shelter and your protection. The scriptures declare when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he is there with you. They do not need your opinions. They need your love and they need the word of God in their life. He says, I've called you to proclaim the captives will be free. That's what I love about our church. I mean, we are a hope dealing, people loving, Jesus shouting church that says there are better days in front of you than there were behind you. That God has more before you than hell has behind you. Church, get excited because you're coming out better, you're coming out stronger, and you're going to come out bolder. Power principle number five. I got to go quick. Progress is better than perfection. Everyone's looking for perfect. Too many people are searching for Mr. or Miss Right instead of becoming Mr. or Miss Right. Let me walk it back for some of you. The Bible says this in Romans 3.10. There's not one righteous, not one. That means we're all imperfect. That means we all have flaws. That's why you need Jesus. If you had no flaws, you wouldn't need Jesus. But I'm so grateful in my flaws that when Jesus comes in, I become flawless because of Jesus. We're all broken. We're all wounded. We're all hurting. But we have Jesus in our lives. Hear this loud and clear today, church. You will never be perfect. That helps me. Come on, where's all the OCD people? I'm one of them. That helps knowing that I, I, I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to be perfect for God to love me. I don't have to be perfect to be accepted by God. No, you have to be righteous. There's a difference between righteousness and perfection. Righteousness is what Jesus does for us. Perfection is what we try and do to get to God. Okay, I'm back. Don't leave, there's more of the message ahead. I want to share a few things with you. If you're enjoying this video, 
give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who might enjoy it too. Plus subscribe. If you subscribe to our channel, you get all this content every single week right to your inbox. Now, if you have any questions about Church Unleashed or you're thinking about visiting, you can visit our website where all the information is there for you. We would love to have you live and in person on a Sunday. All right, let's hop to it. Number six, I gotta move quick. God always sends double for your trouble. Anybody been through hell in your life? Let me see your hand. You've been through hell. Guess what? God promises he's going to bless you more on the other side. No, remember, he commands the blessing. So you can be, oh, here we go. Double for my trouble. I was broke, so now I'm going to be wealthy. You might be. And you know what I'm going to pray for? That you are. The Bible says the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. The Bible says there's blessing and prosperity that God wants to release into your life. Who do you want to follow? The guy who says, well, it sucks to be you. Or the guy who says, no, you can get better. God's going to turn it around for you. I want to be around the guy that's wheeling and dealing the Bible. Not the one that's saying, because most times when people rain on your parade, it's because their parade sucks. <laughs> I'm going to go back to my notes. If you have an email you'd like to send to me, it's milton at mychurchunleashed.tv. <laughs> Job in the Bible lost everything he had. He lost his family, lost his spouse, lost his finances, lost all the things that made him what seemed to be he was. But the Bible says this at the end of his life. When Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as he had before. If you've been through a lot of hell, get ready for a whole lot of heaven. If you've been through a lot of financial problems, get ready. The Bible's, God's about to release some finances into your hands. If you've been through some health issues, get ready for dynamic healing in your life. If you've gone through some relational dysfunction, get ready for some new relationships that are going to build you up, not your spouse because you can't leave it, but you know, other relationships that power principle number seven. This is really funny today. Power principle number seven. When someone shows you who they are, believe them. There's a lot of things you could say about Todd Bishop. It's true. But there's one thing I think everybody who knows me could say, I am what I am. I'm the same thing up here that I am out there. I'm the same thing at a party that I am in church. You get what you get with Todd. You may not like it. That's when you're supposed to say, no, Pastor, we love you. <laughs> Thank you, one person. Thank you, Elton. Always count on you. The truth is a leopard can't change his spots and a gossip will continue to gossip. People can't hide who they are. It always comes out. And when it does, believe them. And when it comes out, believe them and then show them the door. You do not need them in your life. If they are constantly, constantly, constantly attacking you, criticizing you, all the things, listen, it's time to just, I gotta move forward. When someone shows you who they are, believe them. Number eight, you still tracking with me? This is a big one, power principle number eight. Your traditions can cancel God's word in your life. This is something nobody likes to hear, but it's the Bible. And I wish I had more time to go into this, I don't, but man-made traditions cancel God's word in your life if you let it. Listen to what the Bible says in Mark chapter seven. And so you cancel the word of God in order to hand down your own traditions. I wonder how many traditions keep us from really discovering the word of God. What, I said this in the first service, I'll say it again. I can't believe this church doesn't have a cross in it. Well, the Bible never told us to display the cross it told us to carry the cross. But I can't believe there's got to be a cross. They got to know you're a Christian. They should know we're a Christian by how we live our lives. But I, I just, I, it, it just makes me, that's your tradition. And you can cancel what God is doing in an environment when you bring your traditions with you. Well, my church did it this way. If your church was so great, you would have stayed there.
Yeah, but back in the day, we used to do this. Well, rewind and go back to the day. It's 2021. Hello? Definitely getting a letter today. See, I've learned this. The word works for those who work the word. But the word doesn't work if you don't work the word. You've got to work the word. That means I stand on every promise, over 6,000 promises in the Bible. I'm claiming every single one of those promises. I'm claiming the promise that it's for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm claiming the promise over my kids that we prayed over all of our families. Say Luke 2.52, may they grow in wisdom and stature, finding favor with God and man. I believe and declare that our kids will be God's voice to their generation. I'm not going to go around through life and say, well, you know, I'm just going to read the word. I don't just read the word. I proclaim the word. I live the word. I believe the word. I display the word. But I'm not going to let traditions keep me from demonstrating God's word. Power principle number eight. Power principle number nine, refuse to settle for a poverty mentality. God did not call you to settle for lack. Now that does not mean that we don't face seasons of lack. We all do. I'm talking with somebody that lost a job for 10 months. But it's a season. And I believe in my spirit that some in our church, and maybe watching online, have settled for poverty. Well, that's just what it is. I grew up broke. Come on, I grew up so poor I couldn't pay attention. <laughs> this is really fun today. We should do 10 points every Sunday. <laughs> but I grew up in a poor environment. Many of us have had that same upbringing. I'm grateful today. I'm blessed. It was crazy. I remember, I don't know if I told this story, because sometimes first service, second service, they kind of mirror in. But I'll tell you. I remember when I got my first Cadillac at this church. I pulled in. I got criticized for getting a Cadillac. You know, haters are going to hate. But I got to tell you, like, but you don't know the story of that Cadillac. So you judge me by what I'm driving instead of the story that's driven me. So that Cadillac had a higher value. I got it lower because they misquoted the price online. You know what I said? Favor ain't fair. That should have been $31,000. I got it for $24,900. Listen to this prayer that was prayed. 3 John 1-2. Listen to this. I want this to get into you today. Beloved, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically, just as I know your soul prospers spiritually. I'm so glad this church ain't broke. Because if this church was broke, the lights would be off. If this church was broke, we couldn't go out because we have to buy a new sound system. We don't have to take a collection. It's already paid for. I'm grateful that God has blessed us. We can help a city in Guatemala. Come on now, somebody. If we didn't have the blessings of God, we couldn't be a blessing to those around us. Oh, here he is. He's a prosperity preacher. I, I'm not. But I'm also not a poverty preacher. I'm a principle preacher. The Bible has principles he describes in his word for a pathway to blessing. Listen, if you ain't tithing, you ain't thriving. The Bible teaches you want to unlock the blessings of God? Tithe. Give 10% to him. He'll open the windows of heaven, pour a blessing so much you can't contain it. Here's the challenge. When God blesses Todd and Mary, and he starts pouring out his blessing, here's what most people do in church. Huh. What did they do to get that? Who do they know? Who bought them that? Who did? What we should do when someone's blessed is say, Man, go God. Look at what God has done in their life. Because that's what I do for you. When someone gets a pay raise, you know what I'm doing? Thank you, Jesus. Their tithe is going up. Hallelujah. I'm just being real. But in all seriousness, when... Some of you are still laughing. In all seriousness, when you recover from sickness... We'll celebrate with you, won't we? We did that last Sunday over several people. But when you celebrate from financial sickness, we're not allowed to celebrate that. 
When you recover from her late, no, we need to be able to celebrate all that stuff. Because the truth is, he says, hey, your soul's going to prosper. And as your soul prospers, you will succeed and prosper on the outside too. The word prosper in the original Greek is euodo, which means you are caused to prosper. In other words, when your soul's prospering, God causes your finances to prosper. God causes your health to prosper. God causes your marriage to prosper. He causes your business to prosper. He causes your education to prosper. But it first starts with the soul prospering. And that's why our last power principle, uh, number 10, is this. You got to learn to walk with a winner's drip. I know some of you are like, what's a winner's drip? For those that are not millennials, you got to walk with a winner's swag. How do you think I got married? I didn't go and say, oh man, she's, she would never want to go out with me. No, I met her. She'll tell you a true story. When I met her, you know what I did after church? Because we met in church. We didn't meet at a club or a bar or anything. That's for somebody today. We met in church. You know what I did after church? I went home to my little house that was probably like 500 square foot home, right? 600 square foot that we lived in for several years when we first got married. I went into that house and I called my mother. I said, hey, Ma, you're not going to believe this. I met my future wife today. We said hi. I believe in claiming what's yours. Imagine if I called my mother and said, man, she was, she was, man, that Puerto Rican girl from Queens, ooh, she's fine. Imagine if I said that and said, but she would never go out with this little boy from Buffalo. I would say, why wouldn't she go out with me? I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. Some of you need to start carrying your life like that. That you walk through, I'll never get that pay raise. No, walk with a winner's drip. Listen, the, I'm going into this business deal. These business owners are going to love me. I, I'm going to walk in the favor of God. And they're not even going to know why they gave me 25% off. Thank you. <laughs> Apparently the front doesn't want 25% off a business deal. 50, claim it, man. Claim it. So you can name it and claim it, or you can blab it and grab it. I'm taking it either way I can get it. I gotta walk with a confidence. See, you are not a victim. And I gotta tell you, this world has taught you to be a victim. And we are playing the victim card, and our young generation walks around like they're victims. They are more blessed than a generation ago, and yet they think they're victims. We have trained them to be victims. And the church must untrain them to realize you are not a victim. You are a victor. Yet in the midst of all these things, all the difficulty we face, we triumph over them all. For God has made us to be more than a conqueror. You are not a victim. Come on, say it. I'm a victor. Say it out and proud. I am a victor. And do not embrace this world system of you're a victim. Because if you do, you will never get up. You will stay down for the rest of your life complaining about all the hell you've been through. You want to talk about hell? I grew up in hell. I grew up in a poor family. Abuse. I see my mother's head thrown into a stove with a gun to the back of it. I've seen it. But you know what? I ain't complaining about where I came from. I'm celebrating the fact I'm a strong man today because I went through hell. The things we go through, God will always use in your life for his glory and your good. Do not claim a victim mentality. Do not claim it. You're a victor. You're a victor. You're a victor. You're a victor. You, Church Unleashed, are the head and never the tail. Wow, those power principles were 
fire. I encourage you this week, pick one to apply in your life, and I know God is going to move, and share with us what he does. If you're going through that message and thought, I want someone to partner with me in prayer, text this number below, and I promise someone from our care team will reach out to you. Now, if you enjoyed that message, there is still more to come. Click any one of these, and of course, we can't wait to see you next week at our digital campus. See you later.